No. Good evening. All right, it's really good to be here in Australia. It's taken weeks for, for me to settle in. It's funny getting off the plane with all the miserable Brits because we're actually put off by how friendly and nice everyone is. An island of people so miserable that if someone smiles at us, we think we're about to be sexually assaulted or stabbed. <laughs> the fact underneath the smiles you're still self-deprecating just like us. You hate yourself but you have a smile on my face. I, do, I don't want to achieve anything but I'll be smiling while I do it. <laughs> Except in relationships there is a bit, uh, you are similar but a little bit different Physic physically. I mean gorgeous Aussie girl will on the whole select gorgeous Aussie man. Whereas back home we even take the deprecation to the next level. British women will choose an ugly skinny freak like me to mate with, thank God. <laughs> You go, I don't know if there are any British women watching this, but if you take a British woman and say, come through to the next room, the perfect man is in there. He's tall, six-pack, gorgeous, kind and modest. They'll last about two minutes before they go, no, I don't like it, it's a bit oily, it's a bit creepy, I'm not talking about <laughs> Who's his fat, retarded-looking mate? He looks nice. <laughs> I've never worked and I'm a bit violent. <laughs> We don't like it, uh, and that's, uh, but the, where we're similar is with love. With love. Um, we don't, it, it's a paradox for Australian and British men. Uh, the women actually find it sexually unattractive if a man thinks himself attractive enough to ask you out on a date. How do we ever get it on? Alcohol is the solution. <laughs> the solution. If you're in America, women that have been abroad will know this. Go to America, go to France, go to Spain. The men will come up to you at lunchtime and ask you out. Why not? It is romantic, right? <laughs> well, we get freaked out by it. It wasn't right. All these guys were coming up to me telling me I was beautiful, asking me out for lunch. We weren't even drunk. It was messed up, man. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> I was like that with my rape alarm. <laughs> but we're like, we have to get drunk. Guys, it could be love. I'm not just talking about sex here. I'm talking about love. We could be totally in love. It will still wait until we're drunk enough. Drunk, 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 just to wander over to someone and go, I don't care what it is. I just want to shove something up you. <laughs> That's the way we're so I've seen it. In, I've seen it. And are there any women that would choose it? There's no women that Austra Australian women tomorrow wouldn't say tomorrow. I wish men were different that would approach. You wouldn't want it. You don't want some overconfident freak dragging his electronic criminal offence tag across the, the road towards you. Do you want to go out on a date with me? They'll never find your body. Huh? Where are we going? Waste ground. And, uh, but uh, it's also in, uh, in our, once we get together as well, I mean, who here enjoys the initial month of a relationship? Aussie and British women don't. We, we don't order the guys. We, it's uncomfortable. Perfection is horrible. Who wants that early stage? It's when you're trying to be those lying people you pretended to be in the bar when you got together. <laughs> Two lying bits of Tetris that are never going to fit. That's not working to your life. Especially men, pretending you don't have that slightly violent and childish temper for the first three months. How difficult is it? Oh, yeah, in a traffic jam, I'll just laugh it off. I don't lose my temper now. <laughs> I did Buddhism and shit in the 90s. I'm trying to kill it, yeah? If I lose my keys, what's the problem? It's just a key. <laughs> Last about three months. Where's my goddamn keys? <laughs> It's horrible. Does anyone really like that initial phase? There's nothing pleasant about it when you're too shy to poo at a new girlfriend or boyfriend. <laughs> Who wants to be like that? There's no poo in me, just Baudelaire and Baudelaire. I don't even, I don't even have a bum hole. I've evolved it away. <laughs> You're a human being, you're falling in love and you need a poop. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Sheila. Stroke Bruce, stroke Jared. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, there's people in New Zealand going, there are no Jareds here, he's got it completely wrong. <laughs> we shouldn't wish away romance, though. It's, I mean, it's OK, it's OK. I'm glad we have that awkwardness, that reverse mating in the beginning. Not literally, we don't do it like foxes. <laughs> oh, shall we turn the bins out when we're finished? <laughs> and, uh, no, but don't wish that romance would speak to some of the older people. Speak to people that have been cohabiting for four or five years. It's horrible. This is when you know the romance is dead. When your partner farts in the kitchen and you think they're speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was nothing. Our marriage died years ago, Sheila. <laughs> That's a lot from me. Thank you very much. Russell Kane! That's John. Well done. Catch Russell's show. What is International Comedy Festival. Check our website for details. We'll be right back with what we've learned and Ben Harper. <laughs>